Good evening and welcome to the first video of the year. So um, I'm going to continue the topic of uh, functional programming with R. So on one of the, my previous videos, I showed you how you, well, I showed you a, a bunch of things, but I discussed the, um, let's say, two important pieces of functional programming. On one hand, functions, the functions themselves, and on the other hand, um, data frames or lists, uh, because the lists are, let's say, the um, the structure that hold all your objects over which you're going to uh, map or reduce the functions that you write. So um, in this video, I'm going to show you what I did for this blog post. So in the blog post itself, I um, don't discuss my code. I just um, so I just kind of uh, destroy this article by the Economist where they they show this stupid graph with this uh, linear regression line. And I discuss why that's completely, that's fraud, basically. Um, but I didn't discuss the code in the blog post itself. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to discuss the code, but not everyone, uh, not every piece of code. For example, I won't show you how to reproduce this graph because this is just a graph. Well, it's a bit more than a ggplot. It's um, a ggeraph object. So it is, um, it has a bit of um, animations and stuff so you can hover. Uh, over the points and you get the name of the country um, and then I also yeah then I discuss uh, you know what happens if you if you also consider infant uh, mortality rates in each country and then finally what I do in is that's what I want to discuss here is um, how to run 100 regressions uh, how to do that without loops um, so you have the code here in the blog post. I, I will link the blog post in the um, description. Uh, if you're interested, you can read. So the idea of this article by The Economist was to show some kind of a negative relationship between the percentage of people that find vaccines safe, safe uh, and GDP per capita. So um, they show that uh, apparently, according to them, countries that the richer countries um, have less confidence in uh, in vaccines, and I explain why that's uh, that's completely stupid. Anyway, that's not the point of this uh, video. The point of this video is, if we go down below, to explain you this thing. Uh, and you no, know, actually, I won't I won't discuss the plots, but I, I to explain this thing, which runs a hundred regressions, and as you see, with not a lot of lines, uh, and without loops. So I already prepared some code, uh, just to go a bit faster. Uh, and also the example that I'm using in the video, in this video, is uh, different than this uh, vaccine data, trust vaccine data. So I'm just going to use uh, empty cars, which I think you know by now. It's one of the default data sets that is included in R. So it's information on 32 cars. So I'm not a car person, so I will probably do a regression that doesn't make any sense. But it's just to illustrate my point. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to um, just transform so empty cars by default as row names, which are the names of the cars. So I'm going to transform that explicitly into a column called row name just by using this row names to column function that I think is inside the tidy package. But that's optional. That's not something that is needed. But it's just, I think, uh, a good thing to do if you have data sets like that with row names, I think it's always better to transform that as an explicit column because it just makes then manipulating that better. For example, if you want to label points in your ggplot. Then I'm going to just, so the, the approach I always do for myself and I always advise people to do is try to do whatever you want to do, try to do it once, try to make it work. Don't necessarily use functions for that if you don't want to. Don't necessarily do, do complex stuff. Just do it once. So in our case, we want to do one regression. Um, something that I forgot now that I'm reading the code, I realize I didn't explain that. So I run 100 regressions, but of course I don't do that one. So I don't run 100 times the same regression. So I have the same target variable and the same features or the same independent variable and the same dependent variables, but I don't um, use the exact same data set. So what I do is that I create, I split my data set into a training set and into a testing set. And I do that randomly. So I create 100 such sets of training sets and of testing sets 
which are all different because I, I do that randomly, right? So the idea is to run my model on the training set and to evaluate it on the testing set. So here I'm going to simplify that a little bit in the blog post. I explain why I do that better because then I do some um, visual uh, assessment, let's say visual assessment of my models here, I won't do that. But the idea is to is exactly the same. So you split your data 100 times randomly, you run your model on the training set, and you do that, and then you 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 look at the performance of the model on the testing set. So that's the idea of cross validation, basically. It's it's the same the same idea, right? Uh, so here I will just um, I will just take 20 indices randomly uh, between one and um, and uh, n row empty cars, so between one and 32, and I will take 20 of those indices. Um, so here we see below, uh, or let me maybe zoom a little bit because on YouTube you might not uh, see very well if I don't zoom. So below you see, here below you see, uh, those are the indices that were randomly selected. So now I'm going to use that to split my data into a training set and into a testing set. So the training set very easily will just be this and the testing set will be minus. So you see here there's a there's a minus here just to remove these lines basically and um, this this uh, comma space that just means that I'm taking all the columns. I'm not subsetting on the columns. I run my uh, regression which I call fit fitted model on the training set if you take a look, you see, well, I, here we don't really care about uh, the results of the regression, but you can check that. Now I predict my points on the testing set, okay, using my fitted model. And then I just uh, add that to, so predicted points now. So I added the testing set and the prediction to it. So here I predict my points. And here I just add this prediction as a colon to my testing set. Again, here it's not really useful to do that, but in the blog post I, I use that because then I do these um, graphs, so it's better to have it in this format, but it's not something that you have to, to do every time. So you see I have my testing set and I have this colon here at the end, which are the predictions, right? Uh, and then I bind everything together in a data frame that contains both the training set and the testing set plus the predictions. So because my training set, if we take a look at it, if we take a look at my training set, my training set of course doesn't have a column called prediction because I didn't do the predictions on the training sets, which you should never do by the way. And uh, But my testing set has that, which that's because I just did it. Um, oh, actually, no, it's not the testing set, it's predicted points. So predicted points has this new column, so I just add here inside, well, I did that in one step, but you could, of course, do that in two steps. To my training set, I add the prediction column using the mutate function, and I just put NA everywhere. So again, here it's not really useful to do that. I just do that to imitate what I did for the blog post. But um, once I do that, I can bind both the training set and the testing set. So you see here my uh, 32 lines now. And uh, yeah, and uh, here I have uh, my predictions. Okay, so and I have so this everywhere where, where I have an A, these 21st rows are my, um, my, my training set. So I did it once and that's exactly the format I needed to then make the plots in the blog post. Yeah, I won't make the plots, but again, read the blog post if you're interested and you'll see why this format is useful. What I want to stress is that basically anything you do over here, just try to do it once in the format that you need. If in my case, I needed to have this result in this format, but of course, if you need something else, maybe maybe you are interested in, the, uh, in your model itself. So maybe you are interested in the coefficients. So maybe what you you don't really care about uh, about um, having that uh, having this data set at the end where where you join the training and the testing set. So maybe you you want the coefficients. So that's what you should get then at the end. That should be your end result. Okay. So now that we have this, let's put that inside a function. So this is, works. This is code that works on one single example. 
where I get one um, vector of indices, right? But if I want to do that a hundred times, it's useful to have that inside a function. So let's write a function and you will see it will be very useful, uh, very simple, sorry, very simple. Um, the only thing you need to do basically is to write, uh, well, give it a name first. I will call it function. I will say that it takes as an argument data set. Of course, you could make it more complex, this function. You could, for example, so here I have hard coded the um, how many rows I want in my training set. You could put that as well as an argument of the function. You could change other stuff. Uh, you could put even the um, the variables that you want to use as uh, in the regression as arguments as well. If you need to make it very general, then you could put all these little things as arguments of the function. But in my case here, yeah, it's not needed because I, I know that I always want this regression. So I always want to regress MPG miles per gallon on horsepower. And I always only want 20 uh, rows in my training set. So I don't care about putting that into the arguments of my function. But if you need it, you, you could do it. And then I put this here, and I'm almost not done. I just need to replace empty cars by dataset, because that's uh, how I called my uh, the argument of my function. And that's it. Uh, this should work now. Let's try. If I do run regression of empty cars, I do get a result. And every time I run this. I get a different result. If you see, my, my predictions here are always different. That's because every time I run that, I get a new randomly generated training set and testing set, of course. So now I'm done. Almost. I still need to think about the... So this is the first ingredient of functional programming, as I said at the beginning of the video. This is the function. Now I need the uh, second ingredient, which is uh, the list. The list, again, is important because this is where, this is the structure that, that will contain the um, elements over which I need to map my function. So, that's a lot to unpack. What are the elements of, um, what are the elements that should go inside this list? Well, my function uses a data set and it uses the empty cars data set. So I should have a list of 100 empty cars data sets. Because, again, uh, in R we have this um, very special list, which is the data frame, I will do that inside the data frame, just because it makes it easier to manipulate in R. So let me create a data frame that will contain 100 rows with 100 times, so in each row, the data set empty cars. So to do that, um, let me perhaps do that, yeah, let's let's go um, step by step. So to do that, I will first use a triple. So this is the same trick I used on my last video. Uh, and I will first of all create an ID. You will see why in a bit. So because I want to run that 100 times, I just create this table, which will just contain uh, this thing. So this thing, again, if you're not familiar with that, this is a list column. So I explained that in a little bit in more detail in my previous video. So, um, but the idea is that um, you have here a table, a data frame of one row and one column. So one column, the column that I called ID. And inside, it only contains one row because inside this cell, it contains the, actually, it contains the vector of from 1 to 100. Okay, so it's a bit special. It's a bit, uh, it's or unusual if you're not used to to this kind of uh, list columns. But you will see why it's useful. So now to that, I add a new column, which I will call I will call a data set or data sets in plural, and I will use this trick. So what have we got here? We now we have. This thing is now um, a table with two columns. So the first column is my IDs, my list of IDs from 100, from 1 to 100, but inside this list column. And um, my data sets here is again a list column where each element is the empty cars data set. So I will do something else here that might be 
again overly complex but um, you will see why this is useful so I use this unnest column which is contained I think inside tidier I think it's inside tidier so this unnest functions transforms my first list column the ID into the actual vector it kind of simplifies it it, it turns it flat if you want so in, instead of having one cell with uh, which contains my my vector from 1 to 100 now I have an actual an actual normal a colon that goes from 1 to 100 okay but and this is important my data sets um, colon is still a list colon and every element over here is still only the empty cars data set okay everywhere here I have this empty cars data set and now comes the easy part now that I have this in this format, so this is this is the structure, this is the second ingredient. I have the function, which is my first ingredient over here. Oops, so I think I... Oh yeah, uh, this is the function, first ingredient. And now the second ingredient is my structure. This is what I will be using to now uh, do, my, do, do my regressions. And this is something, if you're using a loop, uh, approach you will have to basically inside your loop or outside of it you will need to create this as well you will need to create some kind of structure that over which you will loop and that will contain your results the problem is that well you will probably use uh, some kind of list to do that and uh, it makes things a bit trickier because lists are more difficult to manipulate than data sets and you you need to really think about uh, so your your uh, regression here you need to, maybe the function doesn't necessarily need to be changed but inside your loop you need to do some more complex stuff at least more complex than uh, what i'm doing here now which is i will add a new column called regressions over which i map so map is uh, remember it's the function that implements a loop basically so i will map um, over data sets my function run regression and if we take a look at the results what have we got so maybe I will move my face a little bit okay great uh, so now on the first row we have the in so the ID one so this is my first regression Second column is the empty cars data set and third column is my regression and you see I have a column more I have a column more and uh, this is because I have now this column called prediction okay and I have this a hundred times and uh, we can we can now uh, maybe take a look maybe let me save this in an object for example let's call that results df so I don't have to run it even though it runs very fast I don't have to run it uh, too much so maybe let's uh, just um, yeah, maybe let's just pull out the uh, regression and maybe let's uh, just not to, to have too many of those. Maybe let's just take the, uh, yeah, the five first, the five, fir five, first five regressions. So I have over here, so this is a little trick uh, that, uh, so pull pulls out the column and then this dot uh, just pulls here your uh, your whole vector and then you are able to slice whatever you need to do for example in this case one to five so you're able to slice it out so here I, I slice out my um, five first uh, predictions so I get here uh, as a prediction so 21 etc uh, etc et 22 at the end and then down here as you see I have something else so 23 blah 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 23 so these are different regressions and it's not the same repeated a hundred times because that that would be useless um, another way to look at it is maybe to, to to check okay what do I have at the end because that was my testing set so for example I have the Maserati at the end and this one and here I have the Fiat at the end so you see that it, it is different and and if you look if you go back to my my blog post and if you if you look at uh, the code and what I do next so this then I use that I use the results to create the plots and then if you look at the plots um, you see that uh, all every plot is different 
So read the blog post if you want to see why I, I use that format. But again, that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video was to show you that you can go very quickly from uh, an example, from code that works on one example, to having it go uh, and run for 100. And if I need to change that to 1000, I, I can, and I, I can have 1000 regressions, and that's it. Um, so in this case, I have done my uh, my uh, let's say my 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 loop and my and my and this function etc. I I done that manually, but if you use the tidy models framework, this is will well this will be I don't want to say done automatically, but it's the same approach in the tidy models um, framework. You will also if you do for example cross validation, you will create uh, I don't know uh, 30 cross validation splits, and you'll have that also as a um, as a data frame of list columns. So I will also link another blog post I wrote on um, tidy models, so you can check that out. Um, but in my case here, in this blog post, I didn't use tidy models because it was a bit overkill for what I wanted to do, which was basically just a hundred plots. Anyway, um, this is uh, so. This is really to to explain to you that this function map, which implements a loop, does not care at all about the function and about the list. So it can be a list of very complex objects, it can be a list of data frames, as in this case here, or uh, it could be um, a list of, uh, of uh, well, this in this case, this is a list of models now. Well, not really, because I, I output my, my data, my result, but if I, if I comment, if I remove these lines, and if I return fitted model, then it would be a list of fitted models. So that's unimportant. What's important is that your function knows what to do with each element of this list and then maps does the heavy lifting for you. So um, I think that's all. Uh, it's already quite a long video, longer than I expected. So um, yeah, enjoy working with, um, with functional programming in R and um, yeah, leave a like if you liked it. Bye.